Okay, over to you. RT60. Um, when in a room, uh, if a sound is produced, the first thing heard is the direct sound. It decreases in intensity dramatically because it propagates in three dimensions and loses energy by a factor of four. The equation for direct sound is equal to um, L1 meters minus 20 log R, so yeah. Although this equation is not used, RT60 takes a look at direct sound in relation to reflections. Um, previous to the development of the RT60 equation, physicists used the level recorder which acts as a plotting device that measures the noise level against time on a ribbon of moving paper. They would play a loud sound, for example, the firing of a gun, and as the sound died, the graph would show a distinctive slope. After the development of RT60 was impulse noise, where one would play a loud sound with a distinct cutoff point. This allowed them to measure the time taken for the sound to decrease in energy before the cutoff point. Alternatively, white output noise can be directed through an amplifier, then suddenly switched off, and this would be this would measure the interrupted noise response. Um, RT60 was discovered by Wallace Clement Sabine in 1898, um, actually, and um, it's the time it takes for the original direct sound to decay below 60 dB at its original level. The value um, for reverb can be measured in a wide band signal, e.g. 1 to 10k, though sometimes it's stated as a single value. Um, RT60 equals 0.161 volume over say by Um Norris Hearing develops an alternate me an alternative method of calculating RT60, which was that. And um, Carl Hearing published um, in 1930 a theory of reverberation time in rooms based on an idea that was attributed to RF Norris in Plate 2. He said the difference in level to 60 dB calculated the resulting decay time. Uh, the difference between Norris Earing's approach to Sabine's is that Norris, Norris Earing's equation was more accurate as it looks at a complete absorption of sound resulting in a totally dead room. The Sabine equation will give a non-zero result, whereas the Norris Earing equation will um, correctly give uh, zero. Another significant difference between the two is that the absorption coefficient measured in a Sabine equation is occasionally greater than one. However, in Norris Earing, it must always be less than one. As a result of this, it is not used um, as often as Sabine's RG60 as there is a wider chance of error. Um, RG60 is needed in order to acoustically treat a room. Uh, most rooms will have an irregular reverb to help across different frequencies, causing an uneven sound throughout, resulting uh, calculating and consequently adjusting RG60 helps to average up the making the reverb in the room more consistent. If the um, reverb has too many direct reflections from the room boundaries and general objects, it's harder for the ears to distinguish the sound's intellig intelligibility, and um, it becomes normal. Um, to calculate the reverb tail across a set of frequencies, we choose some materials to base our room on, as well as dimensions of the walls for the And obviously, this site here, as you know, goes to a list of the materials and their coefficients. But um, these are the frequencies, and these are the uh, materials I chose, put, um, concrete coarse walls, plaster walls, and carpet floor. I think one of them was meant to be ceiling, but anyway. Uh, this is the um, frequency absorption table, and it shows how much energy each material will absorb at a certain frequency. Uh, the dimensions of the room are uh, a length of fifth, width of four, height three, so that's a volume of 60 meters cubed, um, and a wall area of 30 meters cubed, or 24 meters cubed, ceiling area of um, square. Ceiling area of 20 meters squared and floor area of also 20 meters squared. Uh, following this, we need to calculate the open window area, and to do this, we add together the coefficient values for each frequency. For example, at 125 hertz, we would calculate 96 plus uh, 768 plus 3 plus 0 0.2, which is 20.48, which is the total window area. Um, RT60 equals, again, 0.161 the universe rate. Um, using our calculations, RT60 um, equals 0 0.161 times 60 over 20.48 um, for 125 hertz, and so on for each frequency. In doing so, you get these results. Um, when looking at these results, you can see that the highest reverb tail is 0 0.515, and that the RT60 is fairly consistent throughout, which is fairly irregular and current. But, um, if the air frequency was large, for example, 10.28 at 125 hertz, looking at the absorption coefficient chart by using plywood or fiber on fiberglass, you can reduce this immensely without affecting the other frequencies. Um, RT60 benefits us in that it allows us to determine the ideal reverb time for our recording environments, which improves the sonic quality of the sound. 
it allows us to understand which are the problem frequencies, so that even if you're unable to adapt your own, your own before recording, you can adjust the sound and mixing. For those who don't desire a low re re reverb time, RT60 can also be used to create a more unique reverb time in spaces that require something different, for example, concert halls and the like. However, as Norris Eerum showed, RT60 can only achieve the non-zero result, whereas his alternate theory can. Um, there are, of course, other ways of treating your rooms, such as diffusers and bass traps, however, they look at standing waves and rooms as opposed to reverb time. That's it.